Greetings everyone. Today we are going to be doing an install on a USI SM36 kit from N1 on my USI 3014A machine. N1 has been making retrofit kits for machines. They specifically design them to each machine brand and form factor of the cabinet. Let's go ahead and get down on here. First you're going to pull out the tray. Um, there is a latch at the top to prohibit it from coming straight out. You'll need to lift it up to slide it out to the second connection. First, we're going to turn off the power to the machine and verify it's off by checking the front display and the bill validator. Next step, we're going to go ahead and remove the control board cover. This will no longer be used. Most N1 online upgrade kits uh, permit the use of the original dumb mech as well as the pulse validator while still enabling the ability to have MDB for credit card systems. USI machines use 24 volt uh, peripherals. We're going to start by disconnecting the keyboard, the micro mech, the bell validator, the power harness, the motor harness, which is the largest connector and then the display cable at the bottom. Once you have it all disconnected, you'll pull it down out of the way and remove the board off of the standoffs. Depending on your model of machine, in the middle of the board, there may be a fifth standoff, which will be removed and no longer used. Next, we're gonna disconnect and remove the bill validator as it does impair with the display um, mounting. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver for this. I'm going to go ahead and pull the bill box off there to give myself some more room. As some of you may have seen, there is a side cabinet on this machine that USI does not support. I will go over um, connecting that in a later video. You're going to remove the four screws from the bill validator, and then you're going to have four screws that hold the existing display in. You're going to remove those four screws to remove the display from the old control board from the machine. The mounting plate for the bill validator will come off with the display. You will need to transfer that to the new display bracket in order to remount your bill validator. Old plasma-based display. Next, you're going to grab your new N1 two-line OLED display with the DEX port bracket already on it. Forgive my helper, she's, help. she's grabbing the part for me. You're going to install the bracket with the DEX port facing towards you as you install it. You will reuse the existing screws to install the display board back to the machine. Take your time on this. I'm going to start out by putting the bracket back on that held the bill validator because it goes through this bracket to the mounting hole. This kit 
replaces the factory versatile controllers with, and supports most SM3, SM4, and SM6 machines. N1 has another USI upgrade kit to replace the factory F80 controller. Both kits include a guaranteed vent harness to reuse your factory iVent sensors with the new N1 kit. N1 will only provide sensors for the uh, 30XX series USI machines. And due to this flexible nature of this kit, some parts may not be needed. Specifically, the keypad adapter cable, part number 11-1700-20, and the power adapter cable, part number 11-1700-21. If your machine has the pound and the star key, it'll have a 13 pin keyed connector, which plugs directly into the controller. Also, you will have a 10 pin power cable with the pin six keyed, which dir plugs directly into the controller at J1. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the bill validator using the screws that came from the validator to begin with. I left one screw partially in to use it as a brace on the kit. Take your time reinstalling the bracket. As you can tell, this is being done on site. This can be done on site relatively quickly within about 30 minutes. So no need to take the machine out of service um, or move it off of site to install the kit. At this point, you're gonna reconnect the two cables back to the pulse validator. One cable goes to the bottom, one cable goes to the top. If you so choose to at this time, you could also, um, with the MEI bill validator, get an MDB cable for it if it's the 24 volt model and use MDB. I don't have that cable at this time, so I'm gonna opt to use the original pulse connection. Now I'm gonna pull the board out of its anti-static bag. And we are going to go ahead and install it in the same orientation as the original board was. You'll snap the board onto the four standoffs. They will click and it'll secure the board to the machine. Up first is your micro mech connector for the original dumb mech coin mechanism. That plugs into J6 with pin 11 keyed. The next cable is going to be your bill validator cable. Forgot I had it tucked up over there. <clears throat> Make sure you check the key orientation. And it'll, this kit will connect to J7 with pin three keyed. And next is gonna be your 10 pin power connector. It'll connect to J1 with pin six keyed. This is the original display connector extension cable. You will no longer use that. Just tuck that down and behind the panel. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect the original 13 pin keyed connector for the keypad to J4 at the top of the board. Take great care when connecting these cables not to damage the pins. Then you're gonna connect the motor harness. Uh, pins one and four are keyed on the N1 board to J10.
Next, um, what I did was I routed the display cable behind uh, the other wires to keep it up and nice, neat, and tucked. Yes, I should have connected it first, but there is a keyed connector on the connector, so it only installs one direction. You'll install that into J3. At this point, all of your connections are made. I'm going to re-add the bill validator box to the machine. At this point, you're going to turn the machine on. You should hear a series of beeps. And look at the display. It'll say, please wait to begin with. And then it'll change to in insert money. At this point, pull the tray back out, hit the menu button, slide the tray back in. It'll say main menu. G goes down in the menu, F goes up. You're going to scroll down to configuration. And then scroll down to where it says configure motors. At this point, you'll hit the pound key. It'll count the motors in the machine. If the motors number of motors match the number of coils you have in your machine, uh, press the star key to go back, and you're going to go to price at this point. Here you have a few options under price. You have entire machine, single product, and an entire tray. If you want to set the entire machine to one price, you'll hit that and then and select your price and press the pound key to save it. For me, I'm going to do tray A as $1 and press the pound key to save it. You can do that for any other tray you so choose. And then you can do single product. And I'll do an example here of my beef jerky. And I'll do that for 250 and hit the star key to save it. Program the rest of the machine like that. And you're good to go.